welcome to this part of logic gates in this part we will discuss or gate first we will see what is or operator in or operator output is high when any one or all inputs are high so if you want to make output high in or operation you have to make any one of your inputs high we implement or operation by using or gate by using or gate and in this lecture we will see different properties of or gate so let's move to it first thing that we have to discuss is symbol for or gate I will make two input or gate y is the output and I will have two inputs let's say they are a b so y is equal to a or b this plus here is or operator this is not this is not the sum that we do in mathematics this is simply or operator now I will make three input or gate the output is y and let's say the inputs are a b and c a b and c so output is equal to a or b or c so this is all about symbol for or gate now we will move to truth table and I will take two input or gate a b are the two inputs and y is the output it is equal to a or b as there are two inputs we will have four combinations and for first combination you can see we have a equals to 0 and b equals to 0 and uh, from this definition the output is high when any one or all inputs are high but in this case a is 0 and b is 0 so we don't have any input equals to 1 so output y is going to be 0 in the second case b is high so output is high and uh, for third case a is high so output is high and for last case both a and b are high so output is high so this is the truth table for or gate and this is very important because we will use this a lot now we will move to associative law for or gate or gate follows the associative law and it says a or b or c is equal to b or c or a so this is the associative law and or gate follows the associative law you can easily verify this like we did in last presentation now we will move to fourth point that is commutative law or gate follows follows the commutative law and it says a or b is equal to b or a very simple so or gate follows the commutative law now we will move to fifth point and in fifth point we will discuss enable and disable for or gate and this is very important to discuss enable and disable we first have to make truth table for or gate a and b are the two inputs 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and output is 0 1 1 1 so this is the truth table for or gate and uh, first we will try to find out enable for the or gate and uh, you can see 0 is acting as enable because uh, when I make a equals to 0 output is 0 when b is 0 and output is 1 when when b is 1 so output is not fixed when we make a equals to 0 so 0 is enable for or gate and it is acting as buffer it is acting as buffer because output y is equal to b now we will find out disable for or gate and for this we will consider the last two cases and uh, when I make a equals to 1 the output is 1 the output of the gate is fixed when we make a equals to 1 so this is disable disable for or gate with output equals to 1 okay you can clearly see changing b from 0 to 1 is not helping us output is fixed to 1 so we can say that 0 0 is enable for OR gate and it is acting as buffer if I make 2 input OR gate this is 2 input 
or gate with output y and uh, let's say the first input is equal to 0 this first input is equal to 0 and second input is b and from this table we can find output y when b is 0 the output is 0 when b is 0 output is 0 and when b is 1 the output is 1 so we can say that the output y is equal to b and uh, this gate is acting as buffer this gate is acting as buffer b is the input and we are getting b as output now we will move to disable one is acting as disable for or gate with output equals to one and for this also I will make I will make two input or gate with output y and let's say the first input is one and second input is b now we will find out y from this table when b is zero output is one when b is zero output is one and uh, when b is one output is again output is again equal to one so output is fixed and it is equal to one so or gate is disabled when we make one of the inputs equal to one this is all for enable and disable now we will move to unused input and uh, you must remember from the last presentation in case of TTL logic unused input or floating input is 1 and in case of ECL logic unused input or floating input is equal to 0 this is very important and you will find questions in your exam on this concept now we will see how to deal with unused input in case of OR gate in first way we will connect unused input to 0 we will connect unused input to 0 and why we are connecting the unused input to 0 because 1 is disabled for the OR gate and we don't want our gate to be disabled so we will connect it to 0 and uh, you will have something like this if I consider the case of 2 input OR gate a is the first input and the second input is floating and I will connect it to 0 then the output y is equal to a or 0 a or 0 is simply equal to a so this is how we can deal with the unused input in second way we will connect the unused input to one of the used inputs so let's see how we can do this I will make three input or gate with output y and first input is a second input is b and the third input is unused and now we have to deal with it so we can connect this unused input to b or we can simply connect it to a this will give us a or b or b on simplifying we will get a or b the last way to deal with unused input is to keep it open if we have ECL logic in TTL logic we cannot keep it open because uh, this will make the unused input equal to 1 and 1 is disabled for our gate so if it is ECL logic ECL logic we can simply we can simply keep unused input floating this is A and this is unused input and we will keep it floating this is floating and the output y is equal to a or 0 so it is equal to a if uh, this is TTL logic then this floating input this floating input is equal to 1 so we will have a or 1 a or 1 is equal to 1 so output is fixed and it is equal to 1 so we don't keep it floating when we have TTL logic now we will solve one problem and this problem was asked in gate 2004 gate 2004 in this problem the given circuit is having two AND gates these are the two AND gates and uh, we have one OR gate here this is the OR gate two input OR gate and then we have one inverter the NOT gate 
now we will make the connections we have two input AND gates in first AND gate the inputs are A B in second AND gate we have floating input both inputs are open or floating output of first AND gate acts as one of the input to this OR gate and output of this AND gate the second AND gate is also acting as the input of this OR gate and uh, the output of this OR gate goes to this inverter and then we have to find out Y we have to calculate the value of Y and we have to consider we have to consider TTL logic while solving this problem let's see how we can solve this first we will find out output of this AND gate AND gate 1 and it is A and B then we will find out output of this AND gate AND gate 2 and uh, the output of this AND gate is very important and uh, this will decide whether we have the correct answer or not because in this gate first we have to make decision for open or floating input whether we are going to make it 0 or 1 and this we can decide by the help of this information we have to consider this as TTL logic and as I have already told you in case of TTL logic the open or floating input is considered as 1 so we are going to consider the open inputs as 1 so 1 and 1 is the output for the second AND gate now we will find out output of this OR gate we have A and B or 1 A and B or 1 is simply equal to 1 because if we OR anything with 1 the output is 1 now there is one inverter and uh, complement of 1 is equal to 0 so Y is simply equal to 0 0 is our answer now we will move to homework problems I have two homework problems for you in first homework problem this is the given circuit and you have to consider consider ECL logic you have to solve this problem by considering ECL logic and in second homework problem you have to consider consider TTL logic and in both of these problems you have to find out the output in this case the output is Y and in the second problem the output is F so this is all for this lecture see you in the next one